Another day, another dollar, right? About a dollar fifty. About a dollar fifty. This is the rental car. As yeah. you can see, it has airbags. Hopefully, we will not need them. Let's hope not. These are the live and radiant foods, kale crunch. No, I did not get paid for that endorsement. Product placement. <laughs> Nice house. It's no, we didn't pay for it. That's the good part. Yeah. It's always a good part. This is downtown Boulder, Colorado. And what you see here is a lot of trees these are million dollar plus homes. It's a very, very expensive place to live. But we don't have to pay for it. It's one of the perks of a corporate job. Whose raison d'etre, to quote the French, is to produce slimy, disrespectful comments in great profundity of lack of intellect. Wow, that's a mouthful. And then in so doing, these morsels of meaninglessness take on greater meaning in the nourishment of their narcissistic, unfed ego, which has lived in infamy on the internet for over two generations now as a sort of mass consciousness of bullshit. <laughs> My personal take on it is that they can say what they want because it doesn't threaten my identity. I know that I'm doing the best I can. We're here driving, we're doing our job. Life goes on. The dogs bark, but the caravan rolls forward. Fling pebbles at the cruise ship as it leaves the harbor. <laughs> Whatever analogy you choose, it's the same basic bottom line. So basically, don't feed the trolls. Yeah, don't listen to them. And if they write things that are highly incendiary and inflammatory, then uh, if you answer those comments, you're actually getting them more money. Because they're paid based on how much engagement their comments receive. So since they are paid trolls, you're better off just ignoring the whole situation. And then they'll have to work harder to make their daily bread. And the funny part is that they probably get paid more than we do. And I've said that before, and it really is true. You have to love the irony of the world that we live in where that's the case. Yeah, it's pretty sad. <laughs> think that these people want to watch us driving down the road like this? I don't know. We'll just see. <laughs> You're battling pretty, all sorts of things about It's pretty trolls. freaking boring. I it mean, is. look, there's nothing happening here. It's, I have, like, I shot hardly any footage for behind the scenes. Well, I think you're, you're screwing up, man, because this is really not very good. All right. You know, the entertainment value that we're creating right now is <laughs> probably about 8%. Right. There's nothing cosmic. <laughs> You're not talking about reptilians. We haven't even seen one. Well, that's not what my vlog's all about. Well, what is it about, then? I mean, it's uh, going to be showing a lot of behind-the-scenes uh, stuff going on at conferences. and But people just want to get high off of your information. They don't care about your personal life. <laughs> all they're interested in is, you know... I guess we'll see if that's true. When is he going to tell me that the saucers are coming? You know, that's all they want to know. So when are they coming? Well, you know, wait till you get a text from me, right? Go That's outside true. now, look up. Go outside <laughs> now. It worked with you, right? It's pretty clever how you're actually covering my uh, side mirror on the right side. So. <laughs> <laughs> may need those Maybe he is an agent. Maybe he's <laughs> trying to murder me. You know, he's trying to... We may need those airbags after all. This would be great. If, if that happened, if we crashed, now that would be a video. 
right? Yeah. That would be very exciting. Or if you hit one of these pedestrians around here that always jump out in front of you and look at you. Well, that would be a idiot. tragedy. That would be a yeah. tragedy. But for the haters, if I got hurt and I crashed, they'd love that. Oh, yeah. That'd we'd be like, that'd, we'd, that'd get like 2.5 million hits. <laughs> and then based on the $1 per thousand clicks, we'd make like, what, $250 or something. It'd wow. be awesome. Yeah. Well, we are in it for the money, right? Absolutely. We're just rolling in it. Absolutely. <laughs> This is always the most interesting part of the drive here because we get onto this road and then we start to be able to play it like a video game. Yeah. You got guys trying to run out into the road like Frogger. this. They're illegally crossing. Over here you have the panhandlers and I don't see any today but uh, nobody usually wants to be at this particular corner on that lane on the right there because they say they need weed and beer and they somehow think that you have weed and beer in the car or the means to procure weed and beer which would involve the issuance of currency but as they tell you in Los Angeles there are signs on the road that say that if you actually give them money that it encourages them to keep on doing what they do which is actually not helping them because we have social services that uh, provide for their basic needs if they have the humility to go in there and actually be subject to the system. So this is America and homelessness can be alleviated. It's usually a function of mental illness. So we try to have compassion for them while also not giving them any money for weed and beer. <laughs> So this part of the drive, we're kind of seeing some country here. This is the 36. It's one. It's basically the main drag between Boulder and Denver. And I've driven on this road many, 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 many times. Along the way, I have seen beer bottles on the side of the road. I have seen a toilet that was discarded on the road. I've seen clothes, socks, shoes probably still wearable but I don't have enough of a sense of adventure to actually stop and decide if I'm going to pick them up or not. Maybe I need to just expand my horizons and try new things sometimes but uh, it's not really you don't really know what you're gonna get when you try to pick up a pair of clothes on the ground. But you know, we just keep rolling down the highway. We have lots of things to explore. If I were to sing songs, I'd probably be violating copyright and then we'd get the video taken down. Not to mention that uh, then we'd definitely lose the viewers. Because that's a little bit of, a, of an arrogant presumption that when there's nothing left to say and you resort to crooning like you're at karaoke, you got a problem. There's, there's some deeper issues in your life that you really need to address. Kind of get beneath the surface and find the buried magnesium that's ready to pop inside you. You know, that spark that's just going to cause you to blow on the slightest provocation. People are explosive. The human mind is an explosive packed force. Sometimes when the pressure is released, People start to disrupt themselves too much. You got to think about your life in terms of what do you really want out of it? And is that what you're going to do the next time that uh, your pain is, is reminded in some dramatic way? Now, kind of I guess the pain that you have when you see all the people stealing your content on YouTube and posting as you. Well, I haven't exploded yet about that. Yeah. But, uh, it's building up, I can tell. I am driving 60 in a 45, which I guess I just admitted to a crime. But, uh, you know, there's nobody here to pull me over and everybody else is doing it. So that's kind of just the way that the society runs around here. Oh, look at that. Bam. See, that's what happens. You cannot, you cannot run those because, well, this light actually does not appear to have a camera. But considering that we are filming, I think the likelihood of success, if I'd already admitted to one crime, 
and then I also run a yellow light at the tail end of it. I think that would be probably an overly aggressive compilation of my own inner misery as it projects out into the world in various unpleasant ways that interfere with others' free will. Maybe that me goes beyond the so-called me computer inside your skull and actually is the awareness of all that is. And we are simply in various grades of amnesia holding us back from the true consciousness where if we can attain that through meditation then we reunify with that primordial consciousness and realize that's all there is and that's all there ever was. Well, I don't need a script. You don't. Are you sure you really have a point of view about that? I think I have an opinion, yeah. <laughs> I think you do. Pretty sure. Okay. We'll try some facial contractions this time. Watch this. Join the conversation to move humanity forward. Now we'll play it like movie style where I'm on a big, huge projection screen and if you move your eyebrow one fraction of an inch, it's too much for the viewers, so you got to just pull it all in. It's like Michael Caine's book, Acting in Film, right? You want to do it this way. Do you understand what he's saying? Uh, yes. You do? Oh, that's <laughs> one of us. ECU, extreme close-up. If you move your eyes at all or your face at all, it's too much. Mm. He's sending messages with his eyebrows, Yes, Corey. this is a coded message. Wouldn't be the first time. So this time I'm not going to do anything with my face. Watch the difference. Join the conversation to move humanity forward. See, that was nothing. I didn't give anything to the camera. Now I'll give a little bit to the camera. Join the conversation to move humanity forward. Just a little bit of this and a little... Now we'll dial it up a little bit more. Check it out. Join the conversation to move humanity forward. And now we'll go totally one nuts. Oh, wow. One more, just for fun. Join the conversation to move humanity forward. That's about as much as you'd ever want to do right there. Which one's now you? Now you guys have all these choices. Which one's you? How would you say it? How would I say it? Yeah. If I said, if you were telling someone, join the conversation with us. Look at all this great stuff, Corey. See, I got a director about. here. She's like trying to coax a performance. This is, this is where you get into the natural tension between the talent and the director. She doesn't think that what I did was good because I was trying to narrate as I went. I want the, the your version. Join the conversation to move humanity forward. Ooh, I like the pace. That's the best one. That was the best one. <laughs> Damn! I like the pace. Okay, long one. Didn't yes. someone think they recognized you and thought you were David Spader at the airport or something? One David time? Spade, yes. Spade? Oh, okay. And I also get Tom Petty a lot. Tom Petty. I like that. Yes. Yeah. It happens. Younger version. Are you ready to wrap? Right, so now I'm going to do my utterly superficial, non-exclusive We Are Gaia clothes. This is uh. not an exclusive relationship. You guys are, Gaia is poly, apparently. You got, you just kind of try things me out. Right <laughs> you want to enjoy your life at Gaia, right? We want to enjoy our life. We don't want to just settle down on any one decision. That's right. About who gets to make the final statement. You're okay, one of the go. very special people in this world. Like all There's of a world. lot of special people here. See? Read your lines, Mr. Special. I want to go home. Fine. Let's just do this. Enough drama. This is ridiculous. We are Gaia. This is Good the stuff. shortest week we've ever shot up here. Usually we shoot five days. That's true. This time we this, shot two days. This was what we call the hit and run. Yeah, four episodes Monday, five episodes on Tuesday. Or to paraphrase James Brown, hit it and quit it. That's what we just did. So now we're heading home to have something we, to eat. <clears throat> we banged out <clears throat> nine episodes. Oh, look at this dude. He's trying to muscle in on me. You see yeah. that? Let him do it. God bless Johnny Cash, it says. That helps your service for him. There you go. See, I just boosted up a little bit more. And maybe I will actually ascend and be one of the 300K. Yes. And tomorrow morning I fly back to Dallas. Then the next day I turn around and fly out to the Mount Shasta Conference. 
Yep, you're going to have quite the uh, quite the reception when you get there. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are really looking forward to getting the chance to see you speak. And we're going to be helping you write that tonight. Get all those slides put together. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really nervous. This is an area where it helps to have somebody who knows what they're doing as an advisor. <laughs> Indeed. And I did five years of conferences once a month, 17 hours in a shot. I definitely have it down. And you can block it out however you want. And the idea is that it's a dance between planned material and improvisation. And you kind of go into improv until you run out, and then you go back to your planned material and you just weave between the two and keep one eye on the clock. Also, another big key for conferences is you got to build in various out points so that if you end up discovering, oh my gosh, I only got through a quarter of the slides and now it's the end of my time, that you have, you structure it so that you have diff different ways you can get out and you have like placeholder images and things like that that you can use so that you don't get stuck. And of course, you have to work in at least one phallic joke, right? Yes, it's very important to make references, shocking joke. Yeah. references to your genitals at least once to uh, explain some type of unsatisfying personal quirk about yourself, therefore humanizing yourself with the audience, since otherwise people will say that you're not humble. But then if you actually try to no be humble... No one's ever said that about you, right? No, if you try to be humble, they say that you have an ego. You try to have an ego, they say that you're too humble. It's like, you can't win. Oh, you can't win. Just like any information I put out, it's either fear porn or hopium. <laughs> <laughs>
our private individuals at all. And this is the kind of stuff that you get to hear when you ride in the car with me. You're getting the backstage pass. Just this rambling, blithering idiot who has nothing to say, but he just keeps talking because the camera is running. And my, my, how entertaining it is to poke sticks at the animals, the freak show in the circus. That's what we're dealing with right here. This is the zoological examination of David Wilcox's personal thoughts. See what I have to put up with? It's this is what I go through every trip. <laughs> Probably watch some movie or something. We have a ginormous television as part of the rental property, which is pretty cool. And bang out a couple presentations. But we don't call it watching movies. We call it Illuminati propaganda research. That's right. There's a big difference. It's not entertainment. We don't even really enjoy it. <clears throat> We're just doing research. It's a very important point. It must be stressed. That is true. Because films these days are not just entertainment. They Propaganda. Are, <laughs> they are a mystery wrapped in an enigma. And together it adds up to Lucifer. Louis Safer. Uncle Lou is in the movie and there's propaganda from these people who want you to worship Lucifer and again I'm not a Bible banger at all I'm not a fundamentalist Christian I'm just coming at you with reality which is that there is a cult that actually thinks Lucifer's the good guy and wants everybody to have to follow it whether they like it or not and if you don't like it then you get to go to camp and I'm not talking about band camp which Permanent sounded camp. pretty cool if you ever watched the American Pie movies because the girls do things with their flutes, and it's just, it's wild, okay? That's not the kind of camp we're talking about. We're talking about a camp that is decisively unpleasant. So this New World Order thing cannot come to pass, and it won't. We're all taking steps. Look at that dude. He's got it all cut out on the sides there. Yeah. That's a pretty trippy-looking vehicle. This is total stream of consciousness. It doesn't even really matter what I'm saying. Boom. We're only going to be here once, so don't treat this place like it's some kind of shrine to cosmic disclosure. <laughs> we'll probably never see this house again, but it's been pretty awesome. Thank you, viewers. We're not going to walk into the house. I think that's a little too personal. Yeah. But uh, it's, been, it's been real, folks. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Wilcock. Duh. We'll see you next time.